their marketing spend, which is currently over 100% of revenues, you take it to 10% of revenues, which is their target, and you keep the overhead at today's level, you don't add anything. DraftKings would still be losing 200 million a quarter or 800 million a year. That is completely and totally insane. And that, of course, uh, Jim Chanos, short seller, uh, on why he's short DraftKings right now. Let's get to Contessa Brewer, uh, who joins us now with a special guest. Hi, Contessa. Hi there, Joe. Yeah, those were fighting words for Jason Robbins, who joins me now, the CEO of DraftKings. Jason, good to see you this morning. Let me just ask you, I know you tweeted out that uh, Jim Chanos has forgotten how to do math. What are your problems with his take on the numbers? Well, good morning, Contessa and Joe. Um, I mean, he said it himself. It's totally insane. The math makes no sense. Obviously, if we quadruple profit, uh, gross profit, cut marketing to 10% of revenue uh, and kept overhead flat, we would not be losing $200 million a quarter. We also are not trading anywhere near 30 times revenue. Um, it's less than half of that. So uh, I'm not sure what he's doing other than, you know, Jim's a smart guy. I'm sure he knows better. And we all have to get up in the morning and look in the mirror and some people say anything to make a buck, but we're not really focused on people selling short. We're focused on the people who are believers and trying to go out there. And our goal every day is to build a great company over the long term so that we prove them right and deliver tremendous value to our shareholders. And um, obviously, it's annoying when people come and make stuff up and you know do that at their own service. But, you know, not much you can do about it. Well, I mean, you did take to Twitter and, and had some pretty harsh words there. I want to ask you about the marketing spend, though, because this keeps it, com it comes up on your earnings calls. It comes up in uh, investor meetings that it seems like the markets are losing patience for a return here and to see profitability happen. Uh, tell me a little bit about how you're seeing the investment in marketing pay off. Take Arizona, for instance. What have you seen about what happens when you spend big? Well, Arizona is a great example. I'm glad you brought that up. We reached 100,000 customers in Arizona in 17 days. It was over 100 in New Jersey, over 200 in Indiana, over 300 in uh, Pennsylvania. Um, so that just shows you how quickly that runs. And, and that was one of that was the only state of those four where we didn't have daily fantasy sports. We had no database until 12 days before we launched sports betting. The reason is because it was working. I mean, we were seeing incredible customer acquisition efficiency. Um, and we manage everything on a horizontal basis. So if it's performing, if our cap tail TV ratios look great, then we think spending more makes sense. We've been very consistent since the day we went public. We've said two to three year path to profitability in every state. Uh, so far, the only state that, that has gotten to that length of time has been New Jersey. And we did reach profitability on the lower end of that, closer to two than three years. Um, we talked about that earlier this year. We're going to have an update on some of the states that are coming up on a little over two years uh, early next year, once we have a complete year of data for 2021. But we've been very consistent. We haven't changed our story. And I think part of what makes great companies is, yes, the markets are fickle. They'll, in the short term, you know, decide one day something's great. The next day, they don't have patience for it. If you're consistent and you execute a strategy that works, um, which we believe we're doing, uh, I think that over time that, you know, that's what delivers value. And the shareholders who are long in the stock, who, who are patient, they get rewarded for that. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.